Hello everyone, I'm Kate and I welcome you to Ballerton Methodist Church's weekly 10 minute ministry, 7 for 10. Today is January the 27th, an ordinary Thursday, just like any other. Perhaps for you, it's been a good day, a day of successes, jobs completed, goals achieved. Perhaps you've endured frustrations, disappointments, tasks left unfinished. You may have received bad news, or maybe someone unexpectedly made contact after a long absence. As you sit and reflect on the kind of day you've had, you'll be able to trace highs and lows. You will know whether this particular January the 27th will be a day to remember. If it's your birthday today, then you share it with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who was born 266 years ago on January the 27th. The actor Brian Ricks, remembered particularly for his Whitehall farces, was born on January the 27th, 1924. Charles Dodgson, who wrote under the pen name Lewis Carroll, was born 190 years ago on, yep, you guessed it, January the 27th. Of course, many days are just mundane, ordinary, uneventful. But as we search back through history, we can identify significant January the 27th events. In 1606, the trial of the conspirators of the Guy Fawkes plot began. It was a speedy affair, for by the end of the month, they'd all been executed. Two centuries later, in 1820, a team of Russian explorers discovered the Antarctic continent. Sixty years after that, Thomas Edison received a patent for his incandescent lamp. And in 1916, the Military Service Act introduced conscription to the UK. On January the 27th, 1944, the 900-day siege of Leningrad was lifted by the Russian Red Army. Exactly a year later, the remaining inmates of the prisoner of war camp at Auschwitz-Birkenau were liberated. And today has indeed been designated as Memorial Holocaust Day across the world. I could go on and on. There are many events throughout history that we can connect with January the 27th. Some are moments that we're proud to remember. Some we would rather not recall. But whatever the past may contain, we cannot turn our backs on it. It is important. The past is the story of our journey, both for humankind and individuals. It's not a place to linger in, but it is a place to value. Through the careful analysis of history, mistakes can be identified and lessons learned, or at least that's the theory. But sadly, we're not perfect people and we're all quite capable of making the same mistakes over and over again. Understanding the past and its importance is something we've really got to work at. What a strange commodity time is. As a race, we fashioned our whole existence upon a rigid scaffold of time. We have divided our existence into centuries, years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes and seconds. We timetable everything we do according to this framework. And without this concept of linear time, we really struggle. It's clear that we need the past, the present, and the future to make sense of our lives. The past is behind us, but it 
propels us towards the present, the moment we live in. But the present is so fleeting and short-lived that it barely exists. As soon as we recognise it, it slips from our grasp into the past. Many will say that we should live for the present. But what do we really mean by that? Do we mean that we should give absolutely no thought to the future? Have no concern about what might happen? Just hang on to what is happening? Surely that can't be a responsible way for anyone to conduct their life. At the moment, we're being made more and more aware of our possible future within a world which is being suffocated by pollution, greed, general ignorance of our responsibilities. And as the radio and television programmes fill our evenings with doom and gloom, there's a great danger that we will simply sink into an abyss of anxiety and do nothing. It's so tempting to sit and worry about the future, presumably because we really have no idea what it holds for each of us. And even if we did know, we couldn't easily alter events to come. Now Jesus had something to say about worrying about the future. Both Matthew and Luke recorded in their Gospels, his, his Matthew's version. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has trouble enough of its own. If instead of worrying about the future, we could focus upon working for God's kingdom through our present activities, then God will indeed take care of our needs and guide us in all that we set out to achieve. We're called to make small, meaningful differences in our present reality over and over again. The future is our greatest mystery. It is not yet written. It is not yet fixed or ordered or permanent in any way, but it is clearly our responsibility. Whatever the future holds for each one of us, and indeed for mankind as a whole, depends upon January the 27th, or whatever day is the current present for you at the moment. We form and shape our future through decisions made in our present, based on our past experience. But beware. Someone once wrote, the future lies before you like a field of fallen snow. Be careful how you tread it, for every step will show. Listen now to an ancient psalm written some 3,000 years ago and used by the Anglican Church on the 27th day of each month. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you 
from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. As we each decide whether we are past, present or future people, we can put our trust in God to watch over us in all we do. Now it only remains for me to thank you for listening and wish you all a very happy January the 28th.